This is my, my one cart camera setup I did. I love the big monitor, it helps me see. But after watching, uh, Tom Buck just posted his studio tour uh, today. I, I haven't finished it, but I started watching it. He's got one of these impact rolly stands, but he's just got a, a, a tripod head, which I have a spare one, sitting on top. I feel like the monitor adds so much more at least visual bulk. For those of you who didn't know, Tom Buck is a pretty big inspiration for me. He was a teacher before he was a YouTuber, and you know I have a soft spot for teachers, and makes some really upbeat educational stuff. Like, I'm a huge fan of just about everything he does. So when he posted his most recent studio tour and showed his tiny little camera cart compared to my big bulky thing, you remember my one when I made the video of I'm changing everything for the, for the Parrot Pro? But I do have the storage on the back of the monitor with like, I have here, I don't know if you can see it. I, I guess my biggest complaint is how hard it is to roll for something I bought to be, you know, a rolly boy. Wireless mic stuff, more wireless mic stuff, uh, dry erase for the slate, shotgun mics, mic clamps. Like I got all this stuff, my slate's over there, and obviously the cables and stuff here that I feel like by getting rid of the monitor, I would not be doing myself a favor and would instead just be passing the problem along as I inevitably need to find a place for all the cables to go. I don't know. I love my Rolly Boy C stands. And I was like, yeah, this is going to solve all my problems. That thing has been super clunky to move around the studio and it wobbles and it's just a nightmare to move around. And I watched his studio tour and felt kind of like an idiot because I had everything he had to build a super tiny little camera cart. This is so much nicer. And so I just completely ripped him off. I literally had everything already available here. So my A cam for my A roll is the Canon R6. Pairs nicely with my EOS R5C. Full frame, a little bit of a crap when recording in 4K. It's like 1.1X or something, not a big deal. Got the old 24 to 70 L EF lens on there. I keep it at about 28 millimeters to keep the pad caster out of frame. Pad caster pair pro right on the front. Just slot my phone in there whenever I want to, you know, use a script or whatever, or I can pull it off if I want to go completely wide. And that is mounted on a basic Manfrotto style tripod head. This is one of the ones I had on a secondary set of tripod legs that I don't use anymore. And so that's just mounted on there, Manfrotto plate, and then Arca Swiss quick release just because I use that for all my other camera stuff. And this tripod head is actually mounted on a Kupo C-Stand knuckle. I don't have the Impact Low Boy that Tom Buck had. I just have a standard impact rolling dolly C stand thing. And I was already using this knuckle for my boom pole that I had mounted on here originally in the setup. And so I just put a baby pin in that and put the tripod head on it and it's perfect. And I don't even need the low boy. Like if I sit down in front of it, it is the perfect height for me. And I actually had to raise it up just a tiny bit to be taller enough, to be tall enough for me. So like this is the perfect height overall for everything to be in. It's actually kind of wild how perfect it is. And that's what really got my gears turning. Originally when I saw Tom's video, I had a bunch of tabs open for the low boy, a couple adapters and stuff. And I was like, am I really about to drop like 300 bucks on this project when I had a rolling stand? And I realized I had everything. And what really convinced me of that was this iFootage arm. iFootage sent me some of their new friction arms and clamps and stuff a while back and I never really got around to covering them I just didn't find the angle for it and realized I still had this in the box and that's what Tom showed mounting into the side of his tripod head now for me I don't have one that has the cool locking thing so I actually shoved it in the rosette mount that you typically put the, the arm for the tripod head in and it locks into place and allows me to mount my Sennheiser MKH416 shotgun mic right there in it and then I can just loosen this clip and extend the arm wherever I need it to go. Autofocus is having a little bit of a bad time here. That's all right. So again, that's on an impact rolling dolly C stand. Got a couple sandbags zip tied to it like I did with the cart before. On top of the camera is my audio recorder, the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Mark II. So this is 32-bit float, wonderful preamps, supports time code, all that jazz, and so I can run like my wireless mics into it, whatever. I just have the one mic for now. Originally, I had it more kitted out, and it's just mounted with a cold shoe adapter directly to the top of the camera. Mic in, mic slot one, USB power running, 
and then I have the stereo out running with a 3.5 mil cable into the mic in jack on my camera. I still gotta adjust audio levels for that. Camera is also running HDMI out to this EYOYO 7 inch monitor. This is a 7 inch field monitor. It's nothing special, it's nothing like the Ninjas, but it requires less power than my Atomos monitors since I'm not recording into it. And it's nice and bright and just lets me get a view of where I'm at on the camera. And that's mounted to the tr top of the Mixpre, which is a basic ball head so I could get the angle exactly how I want it. The monitor has controls for like waveforms, it can do, that's a histogram, not a waveform, but you know, some, some monitoring stuff. It can do aspect ratio correction if I want to shoot anamorphic or whatever. So I have all that going and then I just 3M Velcroed the Parrot Prompter remote to the top of the audio recorder. So when I'm recording, I can grab it off and then kind of always keep track of it when I'm not using it. Now, I also have the HDMI from the camera running back out of the monitor into the audio recorder because theoretically the camera can send time code over HDMI. So I'm hoping by running it this way, the time code will be passed through to the recorder. I haven't actually set that up yet. And then everything is just, you know, as neatly as could be expected, I suppose, cable managed off the back here and run to a single V-mount battery. I love these new small rig V-mount batteries. I hated the V-mounts I had before. This is the 155 model. I have a 99 or 90 whatever as well. And so I have the camera and the audio recorder powered off USB. And then the monitor, since it takes 12 volt, is running off of DTAP off the side here. And then that is just clamped to the hole with a little V-mount v -mount battery clamp thing. Everything is nice and neat on this one little cart that is so much easier to roll around. Like compared to before, I can now just grab it and roll it around and move it anywhere I want in the studio without much friction. And it takes up so much less of a footprint in the studio too. The other one was a super obnoxious to roll around, especially with the power strips hanging off the bottom and running over the power cables. Now this entire rig is battery powered and it's so much easier to just roll in and out of whatever setup I need. It is glorious. So shout out to Tom Buck. You did it better than I did, buddy. This is gonna change the game for me significantly. Remember to be kind, rewind. I have links to Tom's video as well as my original cart setup. I don't have the shelf anymore. I don't have, I had a bunch of stuff Velcro to the back of the monitor and things like that, but I don't need any of that, so. I have both of those videos linked so you can see the evolution, but yeah, remember to be kind, rewind.